Hi, it's my first day on the job. I'm so excited. There's a certain type of video essayist I've expressed a dismay for, mostly just uh, Sonny B2. I've just seen him contribute to this trend of content I've been seeing, and it's kind of bothering me. You might have seen a video floating around that's like good celebrities versus bad celebrities, and it has like a picture of Ellen DeGeneres like spitting out food or something. Who are the five nicest celebrities and who are the five meanest? How did they get that face of her? When has she ever made that face? <laughs> Anyways, that video was made by Sonny D2, and I'm gonna talk about him later. I'm gonna talk about him at the end. He's been a contribution to this type of content I've been seeing. It's just these videos where it's like good YouTubers versus bad YouTubers, you know what? From being one of the most respected and popular streamers on the internet, to being hated by everyone after admitting some awfully disturbing acts. The most noticeable example I've seen of this is people using the seven deadly sins or the seven heavenly virtues to use these YouTubers with. <laughs> they represent good and bad things, right? That's what I have pulled up is seven sinful versus seven heavenly YouTubers. And throughout the video, he uses these YouTubers as examples of uh, negative traits. If they can embody negative traits, here's the negative traits they could embody. For example, Nikocado Avocado represents gluttony because, you know, he's fat and he eats a lot of food and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard from him in a while. I think he, maybe this time it happened. One is viewed as a 130 pound respectable guy, while the other, a 350 pound gelatinous behemoth. So what makes him so different? In the video tonally, it, it's a little strange just because I get the theming of it all and it's kind of a cool idea, you know, all seven deadly sins, that's a thing. Here are seven YouTubers that represent that, that sort of thing. Here's the thing though, is that this video is 23 and a half minutes long and it's talking about 14 YouTubers, excluding the intro, which is like 30 seconds long. It's like a minute and a half for every YouTuber you're talking about. Despite this being a video essay, it's more just like seven little videos meshed into one. Because when you're doing something like this, you're not really getting into detail about anything. You're just kind of summarizing a lot of things. I get it. The whole point of the news is that you're getting a bite-sized amount of information injected into you. What is it about this that irks me that something like the news doesn't? Well, the news does irk me sometimes. A plane crashed and five people died. Okay, anyways, uh, and our final story for today, there was like a deer in the park. Look at it. Uh, I got scared. These foods are typically dense in calories, but lack essential nutrients, leading to an imbalance in his nutritional intake. On the other hand, Matt's diet emphasizes moderation and healthier choices. Oh yeah, Nikocado is kind of like gluttony, but after that, he's just explaining what you already know about Nikocado. If you don't know who Nikocado is uh, by chance, you know, this video explains it a little bit better, I guess, but it's like a mini biography. It's a mini summary. And aside from just comparing Nikocado to the sin of gluttony, there's nothing really new here that you can could really take away from. I think an entire comment could summarize this video and you could take away the same amount of information from that comment that you could from the video. There's nothing really here that you really could take away from, especially if you know who all of these people are. Mr. Beast uses his platform to promote charitable causes and inspire others to give back. His biggest projects include building wells in Africa, adopting an orphanage, and even building an entire town. And by chance you might not know one or two of these people, you know, now you know. There's nothing here that's going to tell you something different that you don't already know. Nikocado eats a lot of food, but Matt Stoney eats a lot of food too, except he's disciplined. That's what makes them different. Did you know that? Well, this guy, this guy just told you. Okay, somehow I missed this. Uh, this guy stole his video. He stole the video from this guy, the seven deadly sins as YouTubers, which makes a lot of sense because when I was first watching this, I was like, I've seen this before. And I thought it was because I literally had seen this video before. And I was like, I thought it was uploaded longer ago, two months ago. I thought that was longer ago. But no, it was, he, he took it from this. Nikocado is one of the most common complex YouTubers I know, and I'm not saying that like as a, oh, he's a mysterious, I have written an essay about this man and it doesn't do it justice. Like, I can't get too deep into it, but I don't know where the line between fact and fiction is with him. Even to this day, I still don't know the line. Penguin Zero and Sneeko have always been known to have a strong rivalry between them. From controversy and disagreements, the two of them exemplify two very different aspects, humility and pride. Uh, this one's a little bit more strange to me than the other one, because you know, you can have eats a lot fat, eats a lot skinny, you know, uh, but this one's a little bit stranger. It's a lot more morally based, I suppose. There's a little bit of an issue, to me at least, with glorifying and vilifying YouTubers like this. Critical hasn't really done anything controversial, so he is like a safe example to use for humility. A really popular person who hasn't really gotten that much trouble. Again, Sunny V2, I'll get to him, but he's another good example where he has like a couple videos where he's like, how Critical destroyed this YouTuber's career because, you know, he's epic. And it really inflates the perception of how these people are seen. 
mean? I think that's a dangerous thing sometimes. Where if a YouTuber like this existed eight years ago, I'm pretty sure they would have used someone like iDubs for humility, because he was the guy that shaved his hair, he was willing to look stupid, he did the content cops, right? He did a lot of things that were glorified by his fans. And once he tried to shift away from that content and he changed from that era of YouTube, he got a lot of people hating him because he wasn't the humble guy that shaved his head anymore. He had an ugly ass haircut. And the perception of him that existed in 2016 decayed over time. Listen, Charlie Critical survived YouTube this long. I'm sure he can survive another 10 years, but it's something that happens. People are over glorified. They're considered these prime examples of humility on YouTube. But when that changes and suddenly the person I thought I knew online actually isn't, people just turn on them because they had this inflated perception. And I don't know if that's a reason iDubs unlisted the content cops, but it's something that happens to people, especially in a culture where people are influenced by a select amount of people they see online. It's dangerous, but it's hurtful to not only the creator, but also the fans. I don't think Critical's gonna get in like any huge, huge controversy. There just might be something that happens that damages the reputation people have put on him. He hasn't really even put a reputation on himself. You were the example of humility that I put onto you, and now you've done something that's ruined my perception of you. And not only can it warp the perception of having people that are public figures be seen as more than people, you know? They're seen as like these demigods of morality, especially critical just because he has common sense. He's considered the prime example of humility just because he says, hey, this is critical. I, I saw this guy say a bad word on stream. You don't want to do that. What is critical's most recent video? This gamer is unhinged. He's just talking about someone who committed a crime. This guy was arrested for stalking and premeditation. You know these are bad things and critical's just talking about how that's a bad thing. The victim's stepfather said he was awakened by screams for help and entered his stepson's room to find him struggling on the ground with Kang still armed with a hammer. But truthfully, I don't have the biggest issue with this video. It's a bland. It's a bit dull. Uh, there's a second video, uh, part two. Let's see. Let's see what who they have this time. There's seven specific YouTubers who perfectly embody the seven deadly sins. However, if you flip these upside down, you'll find another set of seven YouTubers who represent the exact opposite. Did he literally just recycle his video? You know what? There's seven specific YouTubers who perfectly embody the seven deadly sins. Deadly sins of greed, lust, gluttony, pride, envy, wrath, and sloth. However, if you flip these upside down, you'll find another set of seven YouTubers who represent the exact opposite. Alright, uh, for this segment, I'm gonna show um, everything Ryan Pictures the reused in his uh, part 2 video. My name's Ryan, and we'll be comparing YouTubers who represent the 7 deadly sins and their corresponding heavenly virtues. This brings us to Sloth vs Diligence. Sloth is an excessive laziness or the failure to act and utilize on one's talents, while Diligence means to be hardworking and zealously seeking for something with all of one's heart, strength, and might, while Sloth is just being pure laziness. Sniperwolf's behavior is characterized by slothfulness, particularly in what many consider to be lazy reaction videos. While sloth just means being lazy, Eric's slothfulness comes from how he looks for shortcuts and takes the easy route. Like you use different graphics, but it's still like that same clean enough editing so you can kind of get by with saying whatever the fuck you want. If I just moved like this every three seconds, I think I could get away with saying a lot more. I think this would be like a very good debate move, you know? Just move like this the whole time. All I'm saying is that if there's a half-eaten apple in the garbage, you can wash that off. Eat the other half. Okay, what's the example of humility he uses in this video compared to Critical? There are not many YouTubers who best represent this virtue than the outdoor boys, specifically Luke Nichols. Unlike other extreme creators on YouTube, Luke Nichols presents a refreshing contrast, a down-to-earth family man with a genuine passion for the outdoors. It's literally just a guy who treats YouTube like a job. He has a family, he has like a wife and kids and stuff, and he just, he does this as his job, and he knows how to do his job. If that represents humility, I guess. I don't want people like this to be represented as perfect. I don't want anyone to be represented as perfect, but it eventually happens one way or another. There's another the video that doesn't necessarily have the example of the seven deadly sins as YouTubers, but it is just like a pretty much the exact same video, if I'm being honest. It's the most loved versus most hated YouTubers. For every beloved YouTuber, there is also one who is hated by everyone. I can already recognize everyone. Like, again, you have Critical, like another example of, oh, the most loved, you know, everyone loves him. <laughs> Despite standing at over 34 million subscribers, SS Sniper Wolf is famously known as annoying. He's just saying things that's already been reaffirmed by other people. She's a lazy 
crazy YouTuber. She reacts to other people's content. She's a toxic personality, you know? And while she attributes the hate to being a successful female YouTuber, the real reason, as pointed out by Jax Films, is because almost all of her content is stealing content from other creators and quote unquote reacting to them while offering little to no original content. I'm just gonna say this, everything you hear in this video was already said by Jax Films. This is like an abbreviated version of that, which... Just go watch Jax Films talk about Sniper Wolf. <laughs> he has more insight about the situation. Actually, you know what? That's the only reason. These are just lists, is what I'm saying. Like, these are just list channels. Think of Watch Mojo and how Watch Mojo is the preliminary example of basic information just being spewed, right? Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 fast food hamburgers. Here are the top 10 most hated YouTubers. Number 10, Sniper Wolf. Sniper Wolf is a YouTuber, like the presentation impacts that so much because you're hearing someone with like a very subdued voice, a very calming voice. You know, the editing looks nice. Oh, you, I can sleep to this, that sort of thing. <laughs> These are lists that are just paraphrasing information that you can find somewhere else. But aside from being extremely problematic, SS Sniper Wolf is also extremely unfunny, probably because because Technoblade took all her wit. This is where it gets in the weird territory for me. It's all the same elements that you just use for the Sniper Wolf part. The only difference is that you're calling him a good person. As far as I'm concerned, he's a good person, right? You also have the context that he's just not alive. Because the way this video emotionally works is basically bad person, good person, bad person, good person, bad person, good person, right? However, while Technoblade created a brotherhood from thin air, Logan Paul managed to turn even his own brother against him. And there's a similar video the same guy made I, I'll talk about called how a final video determines a legacy because you know the trend of our oh, youtubers are retiring again Examples of good things that happen bad things that happen and they're all with the same cadence and pacing Nothing really changes when he talks about Tom Scott than when he talks about Master Uguay, okay? Tom Scott has been on the platform for what seems like an eternity uploading a video on pretty much any topic you could think of Oimer Sastim better known as Master Uguay rose to fame through his self-titled channel he published shorts in which he recreates the voice of Uguay from Kung Fu Panda. The tonal changes in the subject material, but the person themselves, they might as well just be talking about the same person twice. And again, at the end of the video, he talks about Technoblade again. But what happens if it's life who decides your final video? Technoblade. And I'm just gonna say it, when you do it twice, it's not as nice. You're telling me when you made that one video about Technoblade, you just had so much more you wanted to say about him that you had to make it again? I want to give this person benefit of the doubt. I don't think they do this out of some sort of deadly sin or whatever. And when he talked about Boogie and then he immediately goes to Technoblade, that's a total whiplash. It's focusing on such a general idea of something, but the guy who made this spread himself too thin because he wanted to talk about a bunch of YouTubers, but he ended up saying nothing about them. If you enjoy information, these these videos are information, but there's better ways to consume these things. I think people are falling asleep to these videos sometimes. But it brings me to Sunny V2. I have a bone to pick with Sunny. Because like I said, Sunny probably got all of these other people to make videos similar. The meanest versus nicest celebrities, most hated versus most loved comedians, you know. And then Bobby Lee's in the fucking thumbnail. <laughs> yes, most loved comedian Bobby Lee. There's just this one video he made specifically that irks me the most. So you know how I keep mentioning Technoblade because these YouTubers keep mentioning Technoblade? He made a video called Beloved YouTubers Who Died as Legends. And all I'm going to say is that the videos have a similar pacing to the videos I've already talked about. If heaven was hosting a party for legends, then these 10 YouTubers would all be invited. Supplying the vodka would definitely be Apatow. And then he just talks about how he died. And again, it's a list video. It's a, it's a list of 10 YouTubers who died too soon. Take note of that. He just formats this the same way he formats all of his other essays. He even has like this weird graphic he uses on Abattoir that makes him look like a weird cartoon character. And there's just parts of this video when I was watching it that just struck me out like, wait, whoa, whoa, what what happened? He specifically mentions a language YouTuber, Shu 5500, 5000? 5, 5000. I didn't know who this YouTuber was when I watched it. As someone who didn't know who this person was, the way Sonny talked about him really struck me out as odd. Okay, so for context, this guy died of heart complications at 39. We don't know the reason for it. It just, it happened, right? Um... 
Sonny brings up a conspiracy involving this guy's brother. However, in May 2020, Lao Shu's brother Mark, who often appeared in the videos, uploaded his own video titled, Warning video to Lao Shu family, friends, and fans, Moses is not safe. He goes into almost no detail about it. I had, I actually had to like pause the video and do my own little rabbit hole of research regarding this. His brother made a video a year before he died, uh, being concerned about his brother. His brother dies. Oh, oh and the brother is doing a search to figure out the truth. Okay, let, let's go forward. So exactly what happened is for your own conclusion, but the assassination of Christina Grimm- As far as I'm concerned, this is the most anyone has ever talked about Lao Shu's post-mortem. I, I looked up the brother, I think there might be a lawsuit involved, uh, and the brother was calling specifically Lao Shu's girlfriend feds. From what I can tell, Lao Shu's brother doesn't seem to be 100%, I don't know if he's dealing with grief or something else, I don't know. Based off what I got, just dropping that, Lao Shu's brother thought he was going to die, then he died, and he's trying to find real answers now. The brother's trying to find real answers and maybe the girlfriend's involved. Who? And then that's it. It's focused on an angle of like suspense and mystery, but then he just does it in his generic video essay voice. He was killed, yet Lao Shu's girlfriend responded to the claims by calling them baseless conspiracy theories. We're uncertain about his death, but we know how Christina Grimmie died. I think that's why the other videos of Technoblade I've seen don't really bother me as much. I don't think it's the greatest time and place, but I also understand it's kind of a tribute in a way. But the way he's talking about about them, it's in a light that makes it the most entertaining video. The more I looked into Lao Shu, the more upset I was at the way Sunny V2 handled that death specifically. And also one of these segments is about a bodybuilder YouTuber that died. This guy abused his body, he collapsed and died. And in the video, he just has a clip of the guy like struggling to stand up. You hear his partner distressed out of their mind while he's like struggling to stand up. Although only three years after claiming that he'd had zero side effects, the following video surfaced showing his poor state of health. Maybe this is not normal, I know. I've seen stuff like this before, I'm afraid. Babe, what's up? Hey, babe, Sorry. don't get upset, baby. Baby. <laughs> Baby, everything's gonna be fine, everything's fine. <laughs> Whilst getting a haircut later that year, Rich Piana unexpectedly collapsed before falling into a coma and dying two weeks later. It's upsetting to watch and compared to the monotone delivery of the entire video and the Sunny V2 pacing of just next death, next death, next death, next death. I respected that guy. He at least didn't hide nothing about what he used. Showed folks how not to do it. RIP Mr. Piana, although sadly Claire Wineland's state of health was a little less volatile. Like, I have to take a step back and pause and just say, are you thinking about what you're making? And then in the video, he brings up Etika, and one of the clips he uses is him having a breakdown, like a legitimate mental breakdown. I know you're talking about Etika's death, and mental health is something that impacted him in his life. That's not what you're focused on. You're just focused on YouTubers who died as legends, and you're showing these clips of them, like, struggling to live. Like, he just, like, listen to this. However, after 10 years of content creation, they began to notice that Etika was acting a whole lot stranger. He jumped off a bridge. <laughs> Listen, mental health on the internet specifically is a huge issue, all right? And to me, this is something that belittles these types of things that happens. When someone makes themselves no longer live and all you can say was they were acting a little bit stranger before they did that. <laughs> before they like jumped off a bridge, they were acting a little strange. Hmm. That was weird. However, after 10 years of content creation, they began to notice that Etika was acting a whole lot stranger. I'm done! I'm done! I'm done! From this point forward, if you think I'm about it for the money, then fuck you! Fuck you! I'm doing this because I've been doing it! They began to notice that Etika was acting a whole lot stranger. With those other videos, the way they talked about Technoblade, it was just kind of weird that they were delivering these same things between bad YouTubers. Uh, it's not that the, necessarily that the YouTubers that died were bad, you know, they died as legends. When By the time he gets to Technoblade, it feels less like a tribute and just more like another thing he's talking about. I hate that. I hate that a lot. This is the most interesting thing I noticed about this video was when I went to the description. The idea for this video was inspired by WatchMojo.com who posted a video on a similar topic in July 2022 titled 10 YouTubers Who Die Too Soon. You can watch their version here. And I remember when this video came out, it was hated. <laughs> and when you look at the like to dislike ratio, it is a hated video. People hate this video. You're making a top 10 of people based on how popular and influential they were. Sunny V2 is doing the exact same thing. And 
and I don't know how he did it. He was able to make a video that I think is honestly worse than the Watch Mojo one. It included loose in conspiracy theories. It had clips of people at their lowest. This isn't something you should put in a video where you talk about legends who died too soon. I'm just gonna say that I think some videos are better to not make at all. Really, at the end of the day, the issue I have with Sunny V2, he's a bland, faceless video essayist that kind of gets away with whatever he talks about just because he's able to subdue you. This is actually an example where that's harmful. Here's the thing, you're not looking at these people as people. You're not looking at him as a person. You're looking at him as like this thing that died. I, and I, I genuinely despise that. No, because he used the same creators on the thumbnails, the Watch Mojo video. Like one of the reasons it was notorious was because of the thumbnail it used of beloved creators. And I think it's just because the timing was off with the Watch Mojo video because Technoblade died and like two weeks later they made this video. But <laughs> Sunny V2, this is an assumption. What I think Sunny V2 did was he recognized how infamous that thumbnail was from the Watch Mojo video with Etika and Technoblade. So he made a similar thumbnail that could be recognizable using those same creators. And if that's the case, this is mainly towards Sunny V2. He's the reason for this trend of content. And when it comes to the two YouTubers I mentioned as well, they exist because of Sunny V2. And you can consider these people to be mooching off of Sunny's formula, but Sunny's also the most popular example, and I also think he's the most toxic example. Sunny is the most recent form of the celebrity culture vulture, where he's able to manipulate a high volume of people. He capitalizes on creating warped perceptions of like high public figures. For example, how Penguin Zero destroyed a terrible finance TikToker. It's these polarizing examples of heroes and villains. Not all of his videos are bad too. In fact, some of his better performing ones, like he has a video about John Daly, the man who lost 204 million on a trip to Vegas. You know what? Those are perfectly fine videos to make and they seem to perform well. But then there's these videos where he uses intuition. It really just shows how incapable he is of a thinker. And for me, whenever he has these videos about like dreams, career has 12 months left, these are the few videos he has where he actually tries to like come to his own conclusion. And to me, that tells me what he's thinking all the time is like numbers. Why did this YouTuber fail? 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 And then there was also the Mr. B situation. He got into some controversy with that, I remember. And when I see your content and it's constantly, constantly, constantly drama related and then I get to this video of you and you're talking about youtubers who died as legends really you're just talking about youtubers that died I get that they're youtubers who died but the fact that you're defining their legacy as a channel I hate that it, it doesn't sound like you care about them and as far as I'm concerned with some of these stories they're just stories to you this guy is literally struggling to stand up and you you put this in your video and when I see that you just think about how like good of a moment this is for your video I feel like you selected these youtubers because they tell the best story and I get it you want a good story you know that's think about all the true crime shows the reason you watch a true crime show is because you're watching these mysterious deaths when I click on this video it's not a tribute when you title a video like this it's meant to be some sort of tribute but I don't see a tribute in anyone you talk about when I see this guy you have the story of him drowning in a lake when I see you talk about this guy you're talking about his conspiracy death oh what happened between the brother and the girlfriend Ooh, I don't know but he's gonna get to the bottom of it. Christina Grimmie, obsessed fan assassinating uh, this guy with the video. And when I see this, I want to throw up in my fucking mouth. And I look at these thumbnails. I hate your thumbnail. All you care about is image more so than even like fucking dream. A lot of people don't like dream. I get that. Bro. Like you can't consider the fact that maybe dream is taking a break. He's set for life and maybe he's just taking his time to do things. Look at the end of this video. Dreams two options. Look how fucking negative this is, right? Fully commit to a mediocre music career that no one will take seriously until the day he dies. Look at this and tell me this guy isn't a fucking vulture. These aren't his only options. These are the options that you want. So you can feed off of him. Look at you making me defend Dream, you fucking mosquito. You're one of the most fucking disgusting channels on YouTube, and I, I mean that with 100%. And I hate you because you've proven you don't have to do this, but the reason you stoop is because you're such a desperate fuck sometimes. Like, it's not enough for you to just document things. You have to make a narrative around it, and it has to have a good thing or a bad thing. And when I see your video, and I see Watch Mojo's video, and they have 86,000 dislikes, and you have 86,000 likes, this doesn't tell me that you're more respectful towards the deceased this just tells me you're better at manipulating your audience or you have an easier audience to manipulate. You're using celebrities' names as buzzwords. You're even using the same celebrities' names. You're using Christina Grimmie and Technoblade like they did. The only difference is that you waited. You fucking waited. Like they saw Technoblade's face in the thumbnail and they clicked on it because they're mourning. And that's like your way of 
emotionally appealing to them. And like, simple as, your image lets you get away with this. And then I look at you. Oh, look, your sub count's dwindled. Your view count's dwindled, okay? And while you're doing this, you're still making these videos. But since I'm a commentary channel, I've figured out a way to make it seem way worse, and it really is by framing it in a way that specifically benefits me. I'll leave it like this. I don't like you. At the end of the day, the main thing I want to say about these videos is that these are people. I don't care if sinful YouTubers, heavenly YouTubers, they're people. And having them be polarized in this way, because people recognize good things and bad things more than they recognize uh, nuance. And I genuinely despise this breed of YouTuber that's been popping up. And I think these types of videos are, you know, one of the bigger reasons behind that. Subscribe to me.